Hey, hey, everybody, hope you're doing well today. Well, welcome to the unit called Fiscal Policy, and this video serves as an introduction and overview of exactly what fiscal policy is. But I want to simmer it down to something that's really simple, okay? This, these are the policies that governments use. Fiscal policy is one tool of a toolbox that has really just two tools in it for IB economics. One is fiscal policy. The other tool is monetary policy. And I like to think about, tell my students, think about fiscal policy as like being like a hammer. And it has two sides. It has the part where you hit the nail and it has the part where you pull the nail out, if you can picture a hammer. So one tool, fiscal policy, is the hammer. The part, but it has two functions. And so fiscal policy has two different functions. One function is taxing, and the other function is spending, okay? So spending might be where the hammer, you know, the, the part of the hammer that you use to hit, and that is in, in, in like an injection uh, into society. They create things. And the other side of the hammer, which you would use to take out a nail, is the part where they extract or take out taxes out of people's pockets or firms' pockets or whatever. Okay? So it's a one tool, fiscal policy is one tool that governments have in order to manipulate the economy. It has two functions. One, spending, taking government money and creating something. And taxing, which is taking money out of people's pockets, just like the back of a hammer would take a nail out of a piece of wood. So what I want you to think about is this is fiscal policy puts the government budget into action. So the government has this money, and then what do they do with it? Right? How do they get the money? And then how do they spend it? Okay? So I, I want you to think about this as de a demand-side policy. And it's, fiscal and monetary policy are really difficult to get your mind around for students because they're really soft. You know, it's like these are the policies of the government and they look so different and they're, they're used in all macroeconomic, um, to, to achieve all of the macroeconomic goals. And so in every one of your chapters in macroeconomics, there has been fiscal and monetary policy, fiscal and monetary policy. And sometimes it's called demand side policy, sometimes supply side policy, and it's like it's really confusing. But fiscal policy is what is, is the hammer in the toolbox that that either creates, by pounding a nail in, create government spending injections, or sucking or pulling a nail out of a piece of wood, or pulling money out of people's pockets, okay? So there's the, the image, and now why don't I go on to some like real economic definitions. Fiscal policies is changes in the level of government spending and taxation aimed at either increasing or decreasing the level of aggregate demand in the economy to promote the macroeconomic objectives such as low and stable rate of inflation, economic growth, um, uh, price level, uh, or, or low unemployment, okay? Equity in the distribution of income. So this is one of the main tools policymakers have to achieve macro, the macroeconomic goals, and the other is monetary policy, and I already said that. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Think of it that way. Don't get all confused about what fiscal policy means. It's like the actual f manipulating and in interjection or extraction of money from the government. And now the thing is, you should be, immediately be able to see that that is gonna affect demand. So that's gonna affect aggregate demand, not aggregate supply, it's gonna affect aggregate demand. It'll have impacts later, and we'll get to that. It does affect supply later. But the immediate impact is if government starts spending, the aggregate demand's gonna move out. If government stops spending, what's gonna happen? Aggregate demand's gonna move in. Why do we know that? We know that because government spending is one of the one of the factors that makes up aggregate demand. If the government starts taxing, right, what does that do? Well, that, that eliminates or creates less disposable income. So consumption's gonna go down, aggregate demand's gonna come in. If governments cut taxes, that means people have more money in their pocket at the end of the month. And what does that mean? They're gonna spend it, so aggregate demand's gonna go out. How do we know that? Because C, consumption, is one of the, one of the factors of aggregate demand. Cool. So let's take a look at how we would, we, would, we would look at this on a graph, how we would represent it on a graph. So imagine the, comp the, the economy at full employment, right? That's where, the, that's where there's this beautiful equilibrium between aggregate demand, short-run aggregate supply, and long-run aggregate supply. And right here, 
right? This is full employment, right? So there's really no need for any fiscal policy actions. And so I just want you to see this. This is really important to know that this is sort of where it all begins. But this isn't necessarily, and it, it, it's kind of maybe rarely, where all economies are actually operating. And if they are, well, this is kind of all theoretical. So this is the output, right? The real output of Y, and this is the overall price level. Cool. So imagine, however, if for some reason there was a deficiency in the economy. In other words, aggregate demand moved in. What would that look like? Well, it would look like this. So imagine that the aggregate demand, and we'll call this aggregate A81. Um, this should have a 1 next to it, right? And this is 82. Imagine if the, if the economy were functioning at this price level, an output level, right? This is Y, and this is P1. So this is the equilibrium point where aggregate demand meets the short-run aggregate supply curve. What does that mean? Well, that means that the, the economy is experiencing right, high levels of unemployment, right, higher, than, higher than, than natural rates of unemployment. And there's, there's excess capacity, you could say, in the economy. Well, how could, the United, how could the United States government increase aggregate demand to get it back out here to this optimal point where the long-run aggregate supply, short-run aggregate supply, and aggregate demand meet. Well, it's really simple, right? They spend. Okay, so expansionary, expansionary demand-side policies or expansionary fiscal policy would lead to aggregate demand moving outward because one of the components of aggregate demand, of course, is government spending. And if the government is spending more, then it's expanding its spending, and aggregate demand would move out closer to this point, which would lead to a drop in... In, in unemployment and increased growth and blah, 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 okay? So that's expansionary demand side policies or expansionary fiscal policy. The opposite of that is also true. Imagine if, if a situation where aggregate demand, that's one, this, this is two, where aggregate demand starts out here, okay? So AD1 is here and there's, there's high inflation in the economy is operating beyond the long-run aggregate supply curve. So this is, this is really just, you know, um, inflationary pressure on, on, on all price levels in the countries. What does that mean? Well, it means we're operating beyond the long-run aggregate supply curve. There's going to be low unemployment, but price levels are going to be high. There's going to be high rates of inflation. So what does the government do? It contracts its fiscal spending or contractionary demand side policies, or contractionary fiscal policy. And the result of that would be, of course, that aggregate demand would then come in by either taxing people so they have less money, so consumption goes down, or by spending less money, and aggregate demand would move in back towards this optimal point, which we all know exists, which is, of course, right there. Okay, so that's just a brief overview. You got expansionary demand side policies or expansionary fiscal policy. You have contractionary fiscal policy. And it's all done through the manipulation with this one tool, the manipulation of either spending, hammering a nail in and creating something new or extracting the nail with the other side, which is extracting taxes out of people's pockets. Okay, so there's the introductory um, video to fiscal policy. It's quite dynamic. It's hard to get your mind around, but if you just go through it in a really simple way and try to simplify it as much as possible, it becomes really accessible to you. And I hope you enjoy this video series on fiscal policy, and we'll talk to you in a bit.